Okay, you're bang on time for Siasa Fiesta here on Morning Prime. I trust you slept easy. By the way, it's raining outside, so if you are just about to walk out, remember to carry your brolly so that you are not rained on this morning and keep warm. And we thank God for the good weather right now that the rains are with us. Hello, good morning. My name is Dibala Nair. And today we are, of course, holding court with Farah Mali, who is a member of parliament for the DAB. Also be joined by Dan Mazo, who is a member of parliament for Makweni. And uh, will be joined by Wanjiko Mo here, who is a member of parliament for Kipipiri. And Isaac Mora, who is a politician. We will look at what is happening this week, a big story on the Yala and the nominees so far that also will be, of course, uh, 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 will be elected by members of parliament. It has been such a contentious issue so far uh, with the names fronted, people talking of nepotism as, as, as well. And uh, we'll be honored to be having the chair of the Iyala uh, Joint Committee. This is Wanjiku Mohe, who also happens to be the member of parliament for Kipi Peri. A lot of issues also uh, we'll be talking about KQ. Now they're seeking strategic investors, foreign investors for that matter. What does it portend for this national carrier that has been beleaguered with so much challenges flying now by wire and of course also calling Mayday Mayday for help right now since KQ uh, went on a probe with the Senate. Uh, things have not been going well with them, also with the recent strike by the pilots. So what does it portend for our national carrier? We shall be looking at that as well. The cost of living continue to rise and we are bound to be, of course, bracing ourselves on how we can handle this. Hasla fan is on the table, but a raft of issues around it as well that people are questioning uh, on this particular friend. So let's put the full horse onto the road and run with it and see what it portends for us this morning. You know what to do. You can head over to our Twitter handle, KTN News KE is our Twitter handle. Also, you can tag me at Dibal Ainer. But for now, as always, let's look at what is fresh off the press this morning. We begin with the bold paper. And this is what you're waking up to on the front page of The Standard. People have bugbears and fears of waking up or walking in dark alleys here in the city. It is not secure anymore. And we've been advised at least to be on the lookout on people who are looking suspicious. And this is what is headlining the front page of the standard today. Criminals run riot as security chiefs talk tough. Uh, we're back in those dark days again. Runaway crime. Security bosses held press conferences promising a major crackdown on muggers and bandits. At a time, Kenyans have been forced to take drastic measures to keep themselves safe. And this story is tucked away on page six. We shall be discussing this as well. And remember, tomorrow also we'll be hosting the police spokesperson. This is Dr. Reslina, uh, of course, uh, to talk to us. She's a new police spokesperson on what the police is having up their collective sleeves to try and tame this runaway uh, crime in the city. We have a bite here from uh, Kithuri Kindike, who is... Uh, Interior CSA, quote unquote, those boys who have dared the government and want to tell us that they can take over the city and make it a center of crime, we've had you. And therefore, we are coming to effectively deal with you immediately. That is a story that you want to follow on this uh, paper today, where you have a full coverage on page six of the standard this morning. On the sidebar, on the hot seat, the PS nominees put to task over their past. We have here performance uh, uh, PS nominee Esther Nguero and Parliament Affairs PS nominee Aurelia Rono. Cutting his first questions on myriad issues from integrity to policy decisions on crime and drought. And you can follow the story on page three of the standard this morning. Wanted 3.6 billion bounty for suspected terrorists. The US government is offering hefty cash rewards Credible information leading to the arrest of alleged Al Shabaab leaders. This story is tucked on page seven of the Standard this morning, and their faces are spread here. We have Ahmed Diriye, who is a leader of Al Shabaab since the death of Ahmed Abdi Godane. We have also Jihad Mustafa, leader of foreign fighters and the leader in Al Shabaab's middle wing. Also, we have Mahad Karate, has some command over the Shabaab's intelligence and security wing. So if you see any of his faces, I know Ahmed Diri looks a bit fuzzy there, but if you see any of his faces as well, you are bound to get 
millions, billion shillings, as you'll say, uh, if you can spot where they are. Remember, today is Tuesday. You have financial stamp coming away, the good, the bad, and the ugly of the PP piece, that is public uh, private uh, partnerships. You can read all about it inside the financial standard this morning. Let's look at the teaser on top here. And we have uh, relief for defaulters, bank to write off 15 billion shillings bad loans. That story on page four of the standard Biden and Xi warm up to each other. That is on page 26 of the standard today. Africa demands pay for carbon credits. Uh, this came uh, during the COP27, of course, conference. And uh, that story continues on page 25 of the standard this morning. Ronaldo betrayal bombshell. That is on page 40 of the standard this morning. This is how it looks. Make sure you grab a copy of the bold paper. Let me just run over to Daily Nation where we have Matas Academia splashing the headline there. Bless junior high in primary. This is what parents want. And we have the flag reading there. Tender age of learners and congestion cited in presentation to team collecting views. That story tucked away on page 